Now this is uh, what we can sometimes call a black box model. All right, so methodologically what we're going to do now as behaviorists is study the human being, the human psyche, but not uh, uh, make any direct reference to anything that's going on here in B. The assumption is going to be that there are causal relationships between A and B, between A and C, and so we can therefore directly make causal correlations between things going on in A and the behaviors that are going on here in C. Hem hence the emphasis for behaviorism is going to be on the behaviorism, hence the name of it, uh, rather than referring to various sorts of internalistic or subjectivistic types of states that might be going on inside the human mind. So as I suggested a moment ago, we're going to uh, see everything that's going on here in terms of it being a black box. And a black box is by definition something that you, it's, it's, there's something inside that box, but uh, you can't see what's inside it. So what I want you to imagine uh, uh, here is uh, a, an experimental setup where, suppose from the ceiling, I have a huge sheet uh, suspended, but I've got it suspended fairly close to the floor. And so when you look down upon it, you can't see what's underneath it. And the rules of the game are that you can't uh, kneel down on the floor and try to look under it as well. So from a top view, what we have then is, say, a giant square apparatus suspended, say, by some guy wires right directly up from the ceiling. And we only get to look at it right from the, from the top here. So that's our black box, right, so to speak. Uh, but you can do various kinds of uh, experiments upon it. And suppose uh, what we can do is take a, a ping pong balls. And suppose I've got a big bag of ping pong balls available. And these will be orange ping pong balls. So suppose you have a ping pong ball and we position it on the floor over here. And what we do then is we roll it under the black box. So we just shoot it under the black box from that particular direction. And suppose that one uh, comes out over here. Now we'll designate this by a number. This is ping pong ball number one, and this is ping pong ball number one coming out here. This is uh, our black box. This is the input, right, so to speak. Right, this is our input data. We measure the, bar, the ball started here, it went in that particular direction. This is the by analog analogy, rather, the stimulus right, uh, on the system here. Over here, we have our output. Right, this is our response. You uh, stimulate the back bo black box by shooting a ping pong ball in this way. The response is a ping pong ball comes out here. Okay, so we make a note of that. Suppose then we come down here, we take another ping pong ball, we'll call that number two, and we shoot that one in right, right at that point here. Uh, suppose this one uh, bounces out right over here in that particular direction. Okay. Weird, what's under there? So we come over here, take another ping pong ball. This will be number three. So as we get tricky at this point here, we shoot this one at this particular angle, and uh, it, uh, say, comes out over here. And we continue to do this. We do this with 100 ping pong balls. We do it with 1,000 ping pong balls. We do it with 10,000 ping pong balls. Question then will be, if we've done all of this, and we keep very careful records. If by the time we get to this particular ping pong ball, this is then going to be ping pong ball number 10,001. And I tell you, take that ping pong ball and shoot it in this particular direction under the black box. Should you be able to, do you have a great deal of uh, confidence that you would be able to predict after uh, 10,000 iterations of this experiment before, where ping pong ball number 10,001 is going to come out. And chances are good that you will say, yes, I should be able to predict with a high degree of accuracy where ping pong ball number 10,001 is going to come out. Uh, I've got, uh, on the basis of the pre previous 10,000 experiments right, that we've run, a lot of correlations between inputs and outputs or between stimuluses and responses. And so I've got a very good data set that even though I have not seen and not ever observe what is under this box, I know what this ping pong ball is going to do, how it's going to behave, right, so to speak, and I can predict the behavior of subsequent ping pong balls with a high degree of accuracy, uh, even though this is in principle unobservable to me. So the argument then by analogy that the behaviorists are going to do is to say that what we can then do is just treat the human 
psyche as a black box for scientific purposes. We don't need to get hung up on trying to figure out when someone's lying to us, when they're not lying to us, uh, trying to filter through all of the biases and distortions in first person data. We can be ruthlessly third person, we can be ruthlessly uh, uh, objective, we can be ruthlessly scientific and public in our observations. Uh, here are all of the ping pong balls, so to speak, impinging upon us, and here are all of the ping pong ball behaviors that are going on out here. We can come up with, over time, after lots and lots of observations, lots and lots of, uh, of correlations, ironclad, or very near to it, ironclad predictions based on what kind of stimuli we have, what kind of behaviors we're going to get, and then working backwards, if we get certain kinds of behaviors, we can tell what kinds of stimuli necessarily gave rise to that. Okay. That's the methodology. That's the behaviorist technique applied to, uh, to human psyche.